Hello everyone, I'm Celsius. Nice to meet you here again. Today I would like to show you an interesting European MPV. Today we got a very hot day. Uh, now it is around over 35 degrees Celsius outside, so we need to take the umbrella to help us to cool down. Well, this European MPV is not the pioneer of this segment. This car is a little bit late to this market, but well, it still got some exclusive and very interesting equipment inside. Today, I would like to talk to you with this car, Opel Zafira. Okay, Opel Zafira is not the very first Opel MPV product. Do you have any idea what the very first Opel MPV is? Not Zafira. What would be that car? It's called Opel Sintra. S-I-N-T-R-A. Do you know this car? Okay, if you are not living in Europe, you may not see this car before. Well, uh, I never see this car before. But well, if you live in China mainland, you would know what this car is. Actually, the Opel Sintra is the Buick Venture and OEM version for Opel. Well, this car was built in America and imported to Europe. Europe. Certainly, it is an American-style MPV. It is not suitable for European market at all. Well, the comment for that Opel Sintra is not well at all. People say, oh, this car is all your consumption very bad and uh, it is uh, poor in quality and many, many complaints many many complain at the compliment for Opel Sintra. Later, Opel also noticed that we shouldn't take this segment by the American product. We have to develop a really MPV built for European market. Well, the European MPV is started by the Renault Aspas since 1984 and later Ford Galaxy, Seat Alhambra, and Volkswagen Chiron together and with the Peugeot 806 Citroen Evasion Lanzia Fitra together but, but well, Opel just developed this Zafira alone but Opel is very smart well, we also know that Opel is a German brand People said the very first Zafira is developed with Porsche. Well, I'm so surprised about this information. But actually, I have no other evidence showing how Porsche in, get into this development story. Well, uh, people say Porsche helped develop this car. Mm, that's just believe about that. Okay, the very first Zafira developed and uh, get the very first concept car in 1997 Frankfurt car show and later we get the product version in 1999 and go to market in the April of 1999 the Zafira this verb comes from Arabic means success uh, well we can say the Opel hopes this car get the success in the MPV segment well to compare with those such like Chateauron Evasion or uh, Renault Aspas, the very first Zafira is certainly compact, but it got compact with three row seats for seven seats, and it got a very interesting flex seven seat system. This system also shown on this second generation Opel Zafira. We will show you how to get work how to operate this Flex 7 system in late, later in this movie. The second generation Opel Zafira presented in 2005. And well, this car is just for European and South American market and a little bit Asia market. It is totally different from the very first Opel Zafira. The first generation Opel Zafira is sold worldwide of, of course, except the North America. <laughs> such MPV, such small MPV is not suitable for North American at all. Well, the Opel first generation Zafira also 
go to sell in many many Asian market and uh, most of them was built in Thailand and even there is more interesting is for the Japan market the very first Oppo first generation Zafira still got an OEM version called Subaru Traffic the Subaru Traffic just got a similar with the Oppo Zafira but the Subaru traffic got different and logo well when the Subaru traffic go into market the Oppo Zafira also sold at the market with higher price and lower equipment certainly the Oppo Zafira dropped very first generation Oppo Zafira dropped out of the Japan market so sooner and uh, you you will hard to see the Oppo Zafira in Japan market no matter the first generation and second generation the second generation Oppo Zafira also get bad luck in Japan market because when it go to sell less than half an hour the Oppo brand got threatened uh, got out of the Japan market as well well that's very pity so people say there's merely only 253 second generation Oppo Zafira sold in Japan market well uh, it is a luck that that's not happened in Taiwan market the first generation Oppo Zafira presented in 1999 but not go to sell in Taiwan market sooner because the dealership of the Oppo got a little bit of problem for Taiwan at that while. Taiwan is uh, around um, 2000 and uh, around 2000 the very first Oppo Zafira officially imported to Taiwan and it got certainly popular because at that while we have the we have the holiday at Sunday and Saturday just as beginning so the MPV and SUV got very well welcome for the market and we we can bought such MPV like Mitsubishi Delica, Mitsubishi Space Gear or Toyota Privia Mazda MPV but there is just no such small compact MPV European MPV enter the market so when the Zafira presented in 2000 people were shocked oh such compact car get seven seats and get a European platform so people like that and actually the price is not expensive well when the second generation Oppo Zafira presented in 2005 at Europe the time the Oppo dealer still got a little bit of pr little bit change in Taiwan and the Yulong as well as the Taiwan Nissan get the the power to import the Oppo cars in 2005 but actually the Yulong import the second generation Oppo Zafira in 2006 and the Yulong hope this car get uh, a little bit higher brand and match so at very first the Yulong imported 2.2 gasoline version with very good equipment such like the fully sunroof with a special design go case case box at the roof but well the price is too expensive it was sold around one one point four million Taiwan dollars which is very expensive so uh, when it goes to the market uh, the sales figure is not very well so sooner the Yulong import the 1.8 version that's what we see now in this movie uh, the 1.8 got a lower price less than a million Taiwan dollars it is got a popular well uh, it got some equipment dropped such like the uh, the sky uh, the sunroof and uh, the 6 SRS the 1.8 just got 4 SRS only but well this car is still got a very good performance at safety it got the 5 star uh, ranking at the European NCAP as well uh, so you can see the A pillar is so strong but well there is a problem that when you drive when you are driving at the driver's side uh, you will see you will find the problem is for the uh, the A pillar they get a very blind spot as well that's a pity but well uh, the second generation Oppo Zafira got bigger wider and taller so the interior space is got very well improved 
compared to the first generation. And later, Yulong imported 1.9 CDTI as well. But this engine comes from the Fiat. It is multi-jet turbo diesel. But such diesel engine is not very suitable for Taiwan. Uh, it got a not so well uh, oil consumption and easy to broken. So now if you see the Opel Zafir in Taiwan mostly is this 1.8 you, you, it, it is hard to see the 1.9 CDTI now in Taiwan as well. Okay, let's take a look about the interior. The Opel Zafir first generation comes with the Opel Astra G. They share the same platform. And the second generation Opel Zafir share the platform and many, many parts with the Astra Edge. Such is easily to recognize from the interior. For example, you can see the doorknob design and the handler and the dashboard is just the same as the Opel Astra. Okay, let's take a look about that. Uh, this screen is the same as the Oppo Astra Edge and many many of the switch button is the same as the Oppo Astra Edge as well well uh, but there's still some different designs such as they got an air cooler okay Venturi comes from here that's very interesting and this car is 1.8 basic model so we don't get the leader seats and we don't get uh, the glove case and at the roof and uh, certainly as well as the sky, uh, the moonroof right here. But I don't think it's very important because this car is close to 20 years old. Uh, get a simpler is get better because if you get a such many, many luxury equipment, it will easily broken now. Okay. And this car get uh, interesting for the transmission box. This car get uh, the automatic manual shift. That means it is uh, uh, clutchless. But this transmission box is still based on the manual transmission. So when you turn on the engine, it just shifts as the manual transmission. Okay, let's take a look about that. Okay, this car got a keyless system. So uh, we got a key inside the car and we can start the engine. Okay. Okay, when we start the engine, you can see uh, it, it is now shown we are at the neutral. And when you want to drive, when you got to want to back, okay, we are now in the parking lot, we got the back, and you can push this gear knob right here and right now, and now it is reverse gear. And if you want to go forward, okay, you just take it at the left side, and you will get automatic version. And if you want to get a manual, okay, you can just put it at the left side again, and now it is manual transmission. Okay, since Although it is, uh, when we want back to the automatic version, it just put left again. And if you get this automatic version, it still shifts like uh, manual transmission. That's very interesting. And well, you can see there's no parking gear. No, if you want to park, just get to the neutral. Okay, right here. Now it is neutral. And now that's it. And the, the other interesting is about the handbrake. The design of the handbrake is just like an airplane. And if you want to release it, you have to push this button and get on and get down. Okay. But this design is not very friendly. It is hard to operate for the female because it needs some power. Okay. If you want to push it, it is very easy. If you want to release it, you have to get a little bit power. Okay. This is the 1.8 automatic manual transmission system. That's very interesting. Okay, let, let, let's turn off the engine. Okay, but the most interesting part of this Opel Zafira is the third row FAX 7. Let's take a look about that. Okay, now we got uh, my drive seat at the driver's side. Okay, let's take a look about the second row. Now the second row seat is not the best uh, way. Okay, let's Take it into the back. Okay. If we got the best space for the second row, I can sit inside easily without a problem. So that means if I drive at, if I sit at drive side, I still also can get entered to the second row, but not the third row. The third row is, uh, okay. Well, it just five plus two is not, not, not for seven people to ride, uh, to, seat very comfortably 
There's、um, not many things at the second row seat. If you got、uh, the upper grade, we got the table right here, but not this car. And well, we got the center armrest, even very big, but the operation is very interesting. Okay, you you have to settle it down right here, and we can see that it is very thick. And we got a cup holder, and we got、uh, some some small box right here. And if you want to get it up, you have to take this and get it out. Okay, that's it. Okay, how about the third row seat? What called Flex Seven? If you want to operate the Flex Seven, the third row seat, you have to get the second row seat at the top, at the top of the front. And if you want to get the top of the front, you have to take the first row seat, the top of the front. Okay, that's a little bit, little little bit of operation steps. Okay, let's take a look about that. At the very first, we have to take the driver's seat to the front. All right. Uh, okay. Uh, and later, we got to take the second row seat to the front. And the push button is not up; it is take it down. Okay. Okay. When we we got here, all right. And we open the luggage case, like the rear seat. Okay. If you want to get the third row seat, you have to push this and take it carefully. Okay, and push it down. Okay, that's it. That's the third row seat. And actually, the third row seat is not very narrow.、Uh, I can sit right here barely, but I can get it, enter it, enter here without a big problem. Let's take a look about that. Okay, now the second row seat is at the. Top of the front, and we get here to get easily entry. Okay, let's get get inside. Okay, now I see it right here. Okay, not 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 very big problem.、Uh, according to my mem, as well as I know, it is easier than get into the third row seat of our BMW X7. Actually, but it is not good for the long distance travel, and the the seat for the Third row headroom is not very sufficient, actually. And if you ever saw the fifth gear rear crash test, they ever take the Zafira A as well as the test car, and we will say the the third row seat for the back crash test is not very identical, actually. Okay,、uh, let's get out、uh, because it is very narrow and it is very hot today. And if you want folding down the third row seat,、uh, that's a little bit uh, uh, complex. You have to push this button and get get here, and we have to get the gear get get an up right here. Okay, and take it up. Oh well, well, let's try it again.、Uh, no, okay, take it up and float it, and slowly, easily, to the second row seat. That's called Flex Seven. So actually,、uh, it is maybe not very friendly for the female、uh, driver, but I think it is very interesting design. So we got、uh, the Flex Seven for the first generation Opel Zafira and the second generation Zafira. How about the third generation Zafira? I have no idea because I never drive, I never drove the third third generation Opel Zafira. I just saw it. At the China Mainland Opel showroom one time, but I never checked the detail as well. So this is a very interesting design. So it's like the Opel Caravan for still go at not Opel Caravan, Dodge Caravan. That's very interesting. Okay, okay. This is our simply design,、uh, simply introducing about Opel Zafira.、Uh, many thanks for the honor to offer this Opel Zafira for this video. Actually, the owner just bought this car merely three months, three or four months, and I, I, because I didn't have many chance to drive such SUV or MPV. This is my first time to drive the Opel Zafira, and this car is very good car. Actually, it got、uh, sufficient power and got a very good at the space. Well, it got a very good chassis because it is a European Opel, and、uh, now the Opel is not the true Opel. Now the latest Opel is just a 
an OEM for the Peugeot. I don't have no idea if the, we, we have the latest Opel Zafira or maybe just the Peugeot 5008 OEM cars. I, I have no idea because I, 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 I never care about the new cars. Well, okay, thanks for your watching this video. I'm Celsius. I hope to see you again with some other interesting cars. See you again. Bye bye.